the storm that surrounds me Just one word The darkness has to retreat Just one touch I feel the presence of heaven Just one touch Like 
will never be healed sometimes Sometimes Every one of us aches Like we'll never be saved sometimes And when you've given up Let your healing come Till you're rising up Let your healing come It's your love that we adore It's like a sea without a shore We're lost in you We're lost in you It's your love that we adore It's like a sea without a shore We're lost in you We're lost in you Sometimes Welcome to WordCom. Thank you for joining us for today's worship. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 says, You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Let's honor our Lord by giving to Him. You may give through the following options that is flashed on your screen.
If you don't have online options for your bank or you're having a hard time to go out and give your offerings, you may faithfully set it aside, keep it, and give it when we're back to our weekly Sunday gathering. It's now time for us to listen to God's Word through our beloved Pastor Gus. Blessings, Word Come. Today, uh, I, th- I just thought of this place, uh, a moment that we can just, like we're chatting and talking, rather than me standing and giving you like a, a sermon or uh, a discussion of things. Today, I, I just want to probably just create the atmosphere of a very relaxed uh, time of sharing, storytelling, so to speak. And then from there, hopefully we can draw some insights. Um, maybe I can start off with a story like I've been in the Lord or with the Lord for the past 40 years and uh, I probably would describe my journey as a life of peaks and valleys. Sometimes we see that we have always presumed and always thought that uh, our lives once it's surrendered to Christ that it would be just a, a place wherein it's like meadow that is lush and beautiful and or maybe an orchard where you just enjoy the breeze of the day as you walk and maybe part of that is true but i also think that times it is not the way we always pictured i remember growing up uh, and i was in the barrio i'll go down and do unsa baba and then you can just go down and you go up the different kinds of trees you have santol you have mango, you have uh, chico, you've got guava. It was really just a beautiful place that one would expect that once we are with Christ, we are like, quote unquote, in a garden, really well protected, a sanctuary, so to speak. But as we realize, all of us, that in our journey, uh, it, it is also a life of peaks and valleys. And it is an adventure of faith. It is not something that is quite boring, plain and simple. But it is always like a journey where we see God in different facets and faces of life. Today, I will start a series, a series of characters in the scriptures. People that we uh, know and probably have read several times, uh, scriptures or characters in the Old and New Testament. And today, uh, I've chosen Moses. Uh, Moses is a, a very wonderful character. Uh, Many times whenever we talk about Moses, what comes to our mind is the Ten Commandments. Uh, This is not really my time, but you know, you have the image of a Charlton Heston, a man who was good looking, brawny and strong, a person who had such a a demeanor of competence, confidence as he was speaking. uh, But if we start to look best for us now to go to scripture and from there draw really who Moses was. And, you know, you've got, I would say, at least four books uh, from Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the different uh, personalities and, and uh, uh, facets of, of Moses. But in order for our purposes, just this morning, I've chosen Acts chapter 7. It's the story of Stephen as he was facing now the accusers And he gives now a a narrative of what happened to Israel. And I would like to start off in chapter 7 of Acts, starting from verse 20. So allow me to read for you, and then we'll have a short prayer. At that time, Moses was born, and he was no ordinary child. For three months, he was cared for in his father's house. When he was placed outside, Pharaoh's daughter took him and brought him up has her own son. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his fellow Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian. So he went to his defense, avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them but they did not. 
The next day, Moses came upon two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, Man, you are brethren. You are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? The man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside and said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian, where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. After 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near, near Mount Sinai. When he saw this, he was amazed at the sight. As he went over to look more closely, he heard the Lord's voice, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled with fear and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals. The place where you're standing is holy ground. I've indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt, and I've heard their groaning and have come down to, see, to set them free. Now come, I'll send you back to Egypt. This is the same Moses whom they have rejected with the words, who made you ruler and judge. And I think this is really more how the story goes. And we know what has happened after. And so as we continue, join me in this short prayer as we commit this time to God. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you that we have all the, uh, the blessings of Lord books, and scripture, and also now you, Holy Spirit, because of the risen Lord, you can give us, Lord, a gleamings or gleanings and understanding of your truth. Give us, Lord, uh, an inspiration that only can come from you. Touch our minds that we may be able to fathom your thoughts. And above all, Holy Spirit, touch our hearts that we become more and more like Christ. Thank you, God. I thank you, God, again for your word that is eternal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if we are going to picture Moses, uh, we would say Moses was a, a great man, a, a man of great responsibility and and uh, maturity. Uh, he was the man, after all, who was able to divide the Red Sea. If we are going to describe Moses, we are going to say, oh, Moses is the man who was able to defeat all the gods of Egypt, the ten plagues that symbolized or represented the different gods of Egypt. Uh, we would probably say, oh, it, Moses is the man wherein God gave the tablets, the law, as he was in Mount Sinai. Oh, Moses was the man that came face to face with God, that after many, many days of being with God and communing with God, he went down the mountain glowing. His face was glowing because he was reflective of God's glory. Beautiful story. These are the encounters. These are the crossroads, so to speak, of David. Oh, I'm sorry, of Moses. As he went and, and experienced God in the different crossroads, his encounters, one way or the other, shaped him and and formed him, in a, in a way transformed him as well. And I, I wish that it would have been that story. But again, I, I will always say, in every story, there's not only just the middle, but the entirety of the story of Moses. When I started to say, wow, what a wonderful time that I am enjoying really Moses in Exodus chapter 3 and Exodus chapter 4 on how he was able now to really have this time with God. We say, wow, the transformation is truly, truly complete. You see him from a person who was probably reluctant. All of a sudden, he's a man of confidence. Here's a man who was uh, probably first in his uh, experience how life was a bit troublesome. He was rejected by people. But God gave him such a, a wonderful embrace and say, I'm going to use you. 40 years he was in the desert. 40 years he was a shepherd. 40 years, probably at age 80 now, he felt like he has been abandoned by everyone. And yet, during this time when he was 80 and when we think we're old and gray and there's nothing left, all of a sudden we see God intervening, coming into our lives and say, no, even at age 80, I can still use you. In many ways, that's how we are. We come into an encounter, crossroads in life that we feel like it's an end of the road. And yet God comes, intervenes, and all of a sudden gives us a new perspective in life. I wish that would be 
and could have been the end of the story for Moses. But the story does not end there. As I said, he had his peaks, but he also had his valleys. And to me, the reason I'm saying this is not only to demystify Moses, but it, it is also now to exalt who God is. It is not to break and, and bring down and, and quote-unquote humiliate Moses as I proceed. It is more to bring out and say, wow, here is God despite of everything. How does the story continue? So here's now Moses after really just being able to do a lot of things. He, together with the people of Israel, started to experience God every day. After Exodus, uh, the, the parting of the Red Sea, comes now the manna. They start to see, wow, God was trying to teach Israel. Israel, if you have depended on, on Egypt for all your food, I will take care of you. Remember how God introduces himself to Moses? I am the God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. I want you to have that in mind because in a way, God is saying, I'm the God of the covenant. I'm the God who promised. I'm the God who said to, Moses, uh, to, to Abraham, Abraham, I will bless God's people. And so when now God comes and tells Moses at age 80, as he was in the wilderness, as he was probably tending the flock of Jethro, God now comes and say, says, hey, Moses, I've not forgotten. You see, I'm the God of Abraham. I don't forget things. What I've promised, what I've given Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I am the God who fulfills. And so now he says, okay, Moses, it's time for you to go back. And so now as he brought, back, brought out Israel out of Egypt, and as they have crossed the Red Sea, as they come now in a day-to-day -day life, what happens? God gives them the manna, the daily bread. He gives them now water out of rocks. We see that in Exodus chapter 17, wherein the people were just going thirsty. And then God said to Moses, Moses, strike the rock. Strike it. Because when you strike it, that people will still see the sight that I can still bring out water, water out of rocks. And so he did that. He, they saw the glory of God as Moses came down. So everything was all sight all quote-unquote sensual, the senses, the taste, the smell, the cloud of, of a pillar of cloud during the day so that you know, they are, they are sh they're given the, the, the shade during the heat of the day and there's the pillar of fire during the night to protect them from a a any bandits or even the Egyptians. So all this time, God, for the next year or two years, was giving and providing for them all the blessings, all the physical blessings, just like the Egyptians, because he was trying to tell them, as I have promised Abraham, I am fulfilling my promise to you. I will take care of you. So now we jump to Numbers chapter 1. Numbers chapter 1, that's around two years later. Allow me to read for you. The Lord spoke to Moses in the tent of meeting. So there's already a tabernacle. They could see the glory of God coming on the tent. In the desert of the Sinai, in the first day of the second month of the second year, second year, after the Israelites came out of Egypt. And then he says, take census of the whole Israelites. And so he gives now an idea that this is on the second year, about the writing of the book of Numbers. Now, on chapter 13, and I would presume that this is not far off from the second year, here is now what God says. God says now to Abraham, The Lord said to Moses, verse 1, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, land of promise, Canaan, which I am giving you to the Israelites. So here it says that now, after two years of you experiencing that I've cared for you, that I'm the God who has always remembered you. Every day I feed you. Every day I give you water. Every day I give you shelter. Every day I protect you. Every day you are seeing the glory of God as you move around. You go from place to place. The glory of God falls upon the tent. I'm with you. I'm giving you a sense that the confidence God will never abandon us. And now he says now to Moses, Moses, Time for you now, 
Do you see the land of promise? That's Canaan. Now I'm giving that to you. And you'll see this, this wonderful summary later on in Deuteronomy as well, Deuteronomy chapter 1. But what he does, he says, now, so, so the Lord commanded Moses, and then he sent out 12 spies, one from each tribe. Now you start to say, wait, wait, well, if God, why is he sending out? Just for people and the spies to say, wow, this land is awesome. So now he sends from each tribe, a representative makes them 12. They go out and for 40 days, they go around the land of promise from point to point. And when they return, they said, hey, the land is full of really good produce. The, the grapes, the pomegranates, the milk, the honey is just beyond description. It's just beyond our expectation. But the Nephilims are there. You know who are the Nephilims? The giants. The giants are there. And so now the ten said, the ten said, wait, wait, wait. The giants are there. Let's not enter. There were two people, Joshua and Caleb, and said, no, what, what are we saying? We went there to see what God is preparing for us. Let's go and conquer. Hold that for a while. Now, I asked in the middle of all of this, what was happening to Moses? Moses was still the leader. Up to now, God was allowing Moses and the, the opportunity for, for them to enter the land of promise was there. And then I asked the big question. I said, why is it that as Moses saw the crossroads, the encounters with God in Exodus 3, 4, all the different episodes, going to the mountain, seeing the fullness and the glory of God, having the, ten, the, the tablets, the Ten Commandments, the law, the oral law, and all of these things, they were given to him. How come he was never allowed to enter the land of promise? I jump from Numbers 13. I went to Numbers chapter 20. And in chapter 20, I feel like this is really where I see what really transpired why Moses, with all his peaks, he was now probably in his deepest valley. Verse, chapter 20, starting from verse 6. So by this time, the people were really, no, there's no water. And from verse 6, Moses and Aaron went to the assembly, to the entrance of the tent of meeting, that's the tabernacle, face down, and the glory of God appeared to them. There's another encounter. They meet now the crossroads of their life. And the Lord said to Moses, take the staff. You and your brother gather, gather the assembly together. Speak to the rock before their eyes and it will pour out its water. And you will bring water out of the rock for the community so they and their livestock can drink. So Moses took the staff from the presence just as he has commanded him, he and Aaron gathered all the assembly together in front of the rock of Moses and said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out. Verse 12. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust me enough to honor me as holy, in the sight of the Israelites, you will never bring this community into the land I give you. Now, go back to chapter 13. Remember, he said that here you are, enter the land of promise. Then came back and said, hey, they're just the Nephilims. You see, God all this time for two years was teaching Israel you can rely on me because I'm the God of the covenant. I'm the God of promise. I promised Abraham. I promised Isaac. I promised Jacob. I don't forget. And so now I'm bringing you out of Egypt. And every day I keep my promise. I'm blessing you. You've eaten for two years. Now take and possess the land. But they came back and said, no, 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 we cannot. Why? Because the giants are too big. Moses, who was supposed to be the leader, should have intervened and said, no, no. Because God said, we must enter. 
The word of God is important. But the people were the people of sight. They were still looking with, at the giants. They were still looking at their circumstance. They're still looking at their condition. God was saying, if you are to enter the land of promise, what's a promise? I promise you I will do this. That's my word. I am the God of my word. You are to live not by sight, by the Nephilims. You are to live by faith, by and through my word. That's the reason why Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk, the word that walk means you are to follow, you are to tread, you are to go around wherever you may be, not by sight, but by faith. By faith, what faith? By the word that God is given. And so here is Israel. Here is Moses. Enter. I give you the spice for you to know, yes, the giants are there. But my word, my promise, my covenant is bigger than all the giants you can muster. Your, my faith should come and really hang on to the word that God has promised. Bigger than the COVID-19. Bigger than all the pandemics. Bigger than everything, not my sight. Because the Pharisees were saying, give us more signs. And Jesus says, more signs? I am the word. You see me. I am the expression of everything that the Father had promised. And yet, you do not see. What a tragedy. And so in the same way, here is Moses. He encountered God. He saw God in the burning bush. He saw God in the mountain. He saw God really in the way of how he fed the people for two years. He met with him. He encountered. And yet, like the people, they were the people of sight, not of faith. They were the people of sight, the Nephilims rather than the word that God had promised. Enter now. I realize this is so important because right after the death of Moses in Deuteronomy, uh, in Joshua, I find this quite remarkable. In Joshua chapter 1, after verse 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses aid? Moses, my servant is dead. Listen. Now, then, that is what Jesus oh, or the, uh, the father, God said, Moses, my servant is now is dead. Now, then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River. Now, it's no longer a, a king, a covenant that has been based and, and held down because people could not move in faith. They moved in sight. We. When we encounter God, it is not just simply give me miracles, show me the sign. When we encounter God, we should say, God, give me the grace and the strength and faith that I may believe your word. Because in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, faith is the belief of things unseen. I like what it said in Hebrews chapter 11, especially when it comes now to verse 3. Listen to what it says. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain and certain of what we do not see. It's not by sight. It is by the word. That's the reason why it's the land of promise. It is not the land of sight. It is the land of God's word. And by faith, verse 3, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. God's command. Word. It's God's word so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. Wow. We realize in our peaks and valleys, just like Moses, we encounter God. It is to transform us. Yes. Initially, we, we our babies need to be fed, slowly growing, slowly having to trust things because we are holding on to the hand of our parents. But when our dad or our mom says, 
come jump the baby or the child will jump doesn't see it is in between from the table or something that is stable to the arms of a father or mother there is this gap a chasm to us it's nothing it's just a drop to a kid it is a ravine and yet the child jumps why because it took years of showing i am with you my words that i say jump i'll catch you jump i'll be there that's exactly what happened in the two years that israel journeyed with god in the wilderness but they are people of sight and it took them 38 more years in the wilderness a whole generation died because they were a people of sight now it was beautiful if we, uh, we conclude this we realize that god Maybe at our age 80, like Moses, when we think that everything is gone. No, no, God intervenes. He meets us. He comes and says, I'm going to give you. There is this encounter like he encountered Moses in the desert. No, if you feel down, my encounter is, I'll give you a new and fresh beginning. I'll give you a new purpose. And so now Moses has a new purpose. God continues to encounter Moses. There is this peak. But there are also moments that we should not let slip and forget that when we encounter God, there is always a deeper purpose and meaning. Unfortunately, when the chance came, one way or the other, we lost that, that important ingredient that when we encounter, meet, and have that crossroad with God, we need to grow with Him in faith, believing and trusting in His Word. I would like to and this beautiful story and it's found in Luke and it's in Luke chapter 9 and the reason I like to end this is because we, th we talk about the word that is so important the promises of God I would like to read from verse 28 of chapter 9 after eight days after Jesus said this he took Peter John and James with him and went up to a mountain to pray. He was praying. The appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. It's like, wow, is, is, this, is this Mount Sinai again? Two men, Moses and Elijah, appearing in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. Pause for a moment. Can you imagine how gracious God is? Moses entered the promised land. It was during the transfiguration. But that's not the point. Listen to this. He appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke, they spoke, Moses and Elijah. And the apostles could hear, listen, about his departure. I was looking at the original. And you know what he says? who appeared in glory and spoke of his word there is exodus jesus spoke of the exodus to be fulfilled in jerusalem wow you know what he was saying moses what you have not been able to accomplish and elijah what you have always prophesied i am the word the covenant of the true exodus you see what you were not able to accomplish i am the spoken and the living word and now i fulfill what you have always thought and always dreamt of because jesus is the real word the covenant of his promise and so when we start to say Wow, Lord, indeed, there are moments I find that, you know, I've messed up. I'm so sorry. God is saying, it is all right. Look to me again, for in me is the fulfillment of all my promises. In me is the fulfillment of everything one should accomplish. I am the exodus. I am the genuine deliverance 
I am the genuine word, the fulfillment of the covenant of promise. They entered the land of promise, but we enter the land of real rest. That's the reason why in Hebrews chapter 4 it says, we enter the real rest, and that is Jesus. What is our encounter like? When we come into the crossroads of life, what happens? I hope that it transforms us. I hope it brings us ever closer to a new purpose in life. But in our journey, sometimes we also hit, we come also, we hit the valleys of life. We, there's a misstep. We forget. We become people of sight, not of faith. We are people of the covenant that one way or the other, we have lost sight of his word. Always remember. We can always come back to Christ because in Jesus, He is the one who will give us rest. Remember this, God creates God's people. God's word, Jesus, shapes God's people. And the shape that we will have through His word will reflect His holy character. I pray that we become more and more like Christ, that we will be able to reflect. As Moses came down from the mountain, we will also reflect the glory and the character of Jesus. I hope you enjoyed this story as I have enjoyed the time listening, reading, talking to Christ. Let's have a short prayer. Dear God, thank you. Thank you that in the life of Moses, we can learn that in this life's journey, there are peaks and valleys. But we should always remember, we are not a people of sight. We must be a people of faith. We must be a people not only wanting for signs, but we must be a people of your word, holding on to your word, your promises, that no matter what happens, we will trust your word because your word is more real than the things we see. We pray this. Give us the strength. Give us the courage. Just like Joshua said, give me the strength. Make me strong. Make me courageous. Because I hold on to your word and I shall conquer the land and enter the land of rest, which is you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless your word, God.